might as well get in there and learn it. Uh, so we did. Um, uh, so we, once we did that, we started to really truly learn the instrument of HTML. Um, we actually started reading the source code of WebKit. Um, it's about that long if we print it out. Uh, it's a lot. And we started to really uh, understand the instrument and be able to do some exotic DOM manipulation techniques such as DOM object reuse, three panel method, the event horizon method. These are all fancy names for ways of trying to accomplish uh, infinite scroll view, the thing that Facebook uh, had a lot of difficulty with. Um, we also got into ex exotic frame rate techniques. Um, so now I should start being, I should start, uh, you should start hearing words that sound non webby, non javascript -y, non things of web developer world. So in framework world, you're playing with the GPU. Um, and you're starting to do things that are very well outside of the world of a normal web developer. Um, we actually created our own version of a multi-threaded JavaScript uh, using a frame rate technique. Um, <coughs> as we all know, JavaScript is single-threaded. Um, but we actually started getting into frame rate throttling re using request animation frame. These are all, um, if you haven't gotten this deep into HTML5 development, this is an area, um, these three bullet points are probably going to be your bread and butter if you, want to, if you want to hit 40 to 60 frames per second. Without using request animation frames, you're just not going to get there. Um, <clears throat> and then dealing with the GPU, we realize this is a really tricky, tricky thing. This, it's kind of a black box. The GPU is what allows you to accelerate things to 40 to 60 frames per second, but it reports back basically zero information to you. So you've kind of got to like test it, play with it, and get to know it without knowing exactly what's going on. It's sort of like detecting a planet around a sun a billion miles away. It's very, very tricky, um, but it's doable. It's, it's actually doable. We have links for this as well. One year later, I want to show you where we got to. Um, this is a demo called Nathan. It's going to take a second to load. Um, this is where we got to after uh, a year and a half of beating our heads up against the wall, trying to understand our instrument, <coughs> and trying to get to 40 to 60 frames per second. Um, and do we have good internet here? Oh, there we go. So what I'm about to show you is this is a, a design metaphor that's in the App Store called Cards. We've all seen it. Spotify uses it, Facebook uses it, Twitter uses it. It's a menu on the left, and then Cards sort of slide in uh, from the right. And then you have scroll views where you can uh, get the data and so forth. And the object here was to show an amalgamation of Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and a blog being sucked in in real time. We said if we could bring all these together and do this at 60 frames per second, then we've accomplished something good. And to do this with high def video playing while scrolling up and down in an infinite scroll view, while pulling in cards, and having none of that affect performance. Um, so this was the original sort of test case goal. Um, and as you can see, this doesn't look a lot like Pinterest at all. You can see we started getting away from uh, our original company idea, and we're like, no, let's build our first stress test. So this is called Nathan. It is our first um, uh, stress test. And let's see if we have all the data on the internet here. Everybody's on it. Uh, so we have cards that come in uh, with scroll views. You can see the scroll view performance here is actually 60 frames per second. Uh, we have Twitter coming in here. Um, a very nice performance. I don't know if we have enough bandwidth to play this video, but this video is a high def video. I think you guys are using too much of the interchange here. <laughs> Don't, I don't think we have enough bandwidth, but we can go full screen uh, back to here. Uh, oh, there we go. No, the internet's not going to let us do it. But we can play this video at, at, at uh, full screen. You can see that we have effects going on here, uh, including Ken Burns. If you notice this, which is a, which is a scroll view with an offset, to let you know that there's more data here. So we're able to do, most scroll views just have uh, um, 
a uh, scroll view clip and a scroll view view. We actually have a scroll view page, scroll view clip, scroll view view, so you can do offset scroll views. You notice that when I come in uh, to the thing, it's slide, it, it sort of eases in to let you know that there's more data out there. Uh, we built our own uh, media libraries. Um, we actually then reverse engineered and included my favorite again, Isotope. So this animation here for doing filtering is actually Isotope refactored. Um, and so on and so forth. Uh, so we have very good performance here. Um, and what you're looking at here was at the point uh, just before we gave up all the third party libraries. This is jQuery Mobile, believe it or not. Although it's so refactored and so redone and so forked, we forked it and just built our own version that I wouldn't even call this jQuery Mobile. And it has a little bit of isotope in it. Um, the problem with this uh, demo, so we show this to our investors and they're like, launch! You know, you'll take over the world. This is absolutely performant. Um, uh, you can circumvent the Apple App Store. You can, you, can, you can just take over the world with this. And our reaction was very different because we were the ones that coded this. Um, and our reaction was, we thought this was jank. Uh, and the reason is, is because that demo I just showed you only runs on an iPad 2 and above, doesn't run on an iPad 1, it won't run on any iPhone, it won't run on any Android device, and if you sneeze at it, it blows up. And the code that is behind that is what I would call spaghetti code. It's a bunch of duct tape holding that thing together for dear life. And so, what we decided, what we decided was the case, was that you can make HTML5 performant, but at what price? That's the question. And we said, you know, we're not going to sell our souls as engineers in order just to get this performance and then hate our jobs for the rest of our life. So we did something that was kind of crazy. We refused to build the app. And we just said, we're not going to do it. And this is what I would say is, is the key lesson at the end of the day. Coding for mobile apps is much less forgiving than coding for websites. And the reason is because performance problems aren't singular in nature. They're a combination of a whole bunch of things interacting with each other. And the thing is, you can see these simple demos that jQuery and Sentia and so forth put together. But as you build an actual complex real app, complexity actually increases. And therefore, the number of things interacting increases. And therefore, you go up by several orders of magnitude the difficulty of hunting down each and every performance bug that you get. And the difference between native building of code and HTML5 building of code is when you hit a performance bug in Objective C, you can hunt it down and you can fix that bug. In HTML5, quite often, you can't. You just can't. And so the demo you saw Nate, that, that we call Nathan that so many people are uh, excited about actually was just an exotic dance around the bugs that are inherent in HTML5. We didn't fix a damn thing. Um, so then we went crazy and we went to WebGL. And we started building everything in WebGL and we said, wait a minute, we can't use WebGL in Canvas by default, as beautiful as WebGL is, and I'm a huge fan of WebGL, because it's not webby. We lose object level event handling, we lose text as text, we lose the ability to do SEO for things, we lose all the beauty and maturity and the wonders of the web that we've been loving for, for years. Um, and so we knew we could get to 60 frames per second with WebGL, but we would lose so much of the benefits of the web. We're like, wait a minute, we've accomplished nothing if that's the direction we go. So we went back to reading WebKit code and looking at WebKit, and we said, at this point in time, we had, out of the million we raised, we had 700 in the bank. And we're like, look, let's double down and just figure out what the original sin is and see if we can solve it. So, um, these, this is basically the conclusion we came to in looking at that, that WebGL is great for 3D rendered things, like a game or an object. Canvas is great for 2D rendered things, and, and that's using the right tool for the, for the right job. And HTML, if we all remember uh, uh, WebKit, it is optimized to render a document. 
DOM stands for the Document Object Model. And you know what? It does it really, really well. It is optimized to render a document extremely well, but it sucks at rendering an app. It's just not built for that. And so it's not like saying WebKit sucks. That's inappropriate. So the appropriate thing to say is, it's not the right tool for the right job. And we said what's missing is a renderer built to render an app. That's what's missing. Um, and if we can look at, so this is WebKit. So inside of Chrome and Safari is Web is Web Core, and uh, so inside of WebKit is Web Core. Excuse me. And inside of Web Core are these five key areas. And when we looked at the code, these red areas are where we realized it's optimized for a document and not for an app. Um, <clears throat> DOM, DOM tree construction, render tree construction, and the layout of the render tree. These are where it reads the DOM, parses the DOM, creates a, a, a layout, and then sends what's called a, three, uh, CS, uh, excuse me, a 3D matrix to the GPU. It's a 16-digit uh, code. That, that's the way the GPU talks. And so we decided to do something crazy. Uh, we had done some performance testing in